Well, let's talk about faith a little bit more this morning. We, we talked about faith last week um, in Sunday School Hour, Joshua chapter 3. Um, and uh, just as a reminder, let me read with you uh, the first few verses here. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and they removed from Shittim and came to Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and lodged there before they passed over. Joshua 3.1. Verse 2, and it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host and they commanded the people saying, when ye see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priests and the Levites bearing it, then you shall remove from your place and go after it. And there shall be a space between you and it about 2,000 cubits by measure. Come not near unto it that thou may know the way which thou must go, for ye have not passed this way heretofore. Verse 5 is the key verse we've been talking about. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Sanctify yourselves was the point that I made last Sunday morning um, and how that is to separate ourselves and to purify ourselves and prepare ourselves uh, for God to do something, all right? And by the way, that is a faith step, all right? We're talking about steps of faith. How do we uh, grow in our faith? How does our relationship with God grow? Well, we have to prepare ourselves. Um, so that is, again, set apart, uh, separate, appoint to holy use, and cleanse uh, is also another word uh, that is used in, in sanctification or sanctify. So... That was step number one. This morning, I want to get into step number two with you. But uh, before we do that, let's have a word of prayer. Father, I want to thank you for the day. Thank you for your love and mercy, for your grace and for your help. I thank you for saving me and uh, allowing me to be in this place where I can encourage and, and teach and challenge other people as well. I pray that you'd bless uh, the day. I pray that you'd bless the teaching and the, and the, the word that will be spoken and I pray that you bless those that are even preparing yet now to come. And that, Father, you would help them to, to uh, put aside all distractions. That you'd help them to prepare their heart and uh, come to seek you. Uh, and, uh, Father, I pray that you just uh, do the work there that only you can do um, as we come together uh, in your place, in your house here, to hear from you. We ask your blessing on our time together. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, let's go from here down to verse number 8, which will be our next key thought that I want to share with you. Verse 6 says, And Joshua spake unto the priest, saying, Take up the ark of the covenant, and pass over before the people. And they took up the ark of the covenant, and went before the people. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. And thou shalt command the priests that bear the ark of the covenant, saying, When ye are come to the brink of the water of the Jordan, ye shall stand still in Jordan. I want you to get the picture here. Joshua's preparing the people. He says, All you people, sanctify yourselves. Wash your clothes, clean up, understand that we're going to see God do something here. Um, and uh, key thought, he tells the priests, you all are going to pick up the Ark of the Covenant, and I want you to move out in front of everybody until you get your feet wet. And the key thought that I want to communicate to you is, if we're going to grow in faith, we're going to have to get our feet wet. What does that mean? That means getting off of our seat of comfort and moving forward until it starts getting uncomfortable. We'll say, wait a minute, the path isn't drive in front of me. How do I know for sure this is the way? Well, you get your feet wet, and then God opens up the rest of the way. If you're following God's directions, you may have to get your feet wet, all right? They had to stand still in Jordan. They had to get into the Jordan River before God opened up the flooding Jordan so that they could get across. Notice as we read down to verse 13, it says, uh, uh, let's see here, we stopped at verse 
8. Jump with me uh, down to verse uh, 11. It says, Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of, the, of all the earth pass over before you into Jordan. He told the people, we're, they're going to stand in Jordan. Now, therefore, take, yourself, uh, take you twelve men out of the tribes of Israel, out of every tribe of man, and it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, uh, the Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon and heap. Now, Joshua tells the people, listen, he told the, the priests, first of all, go stand in the Jordan. And then he told the people, when the priests go stand in Jordan, then God's going to do something. But you all need to be prepared ahead of time. Don't wait until their feet are in the water to go wash your clothes. But then he says, when they do stand in the Jordan, then God's going to do something. Do you understand that it wasn't ahead of time. He told them ahead of time, but it required a step of faith on their part. And that's what we're talking about, growing our faith. Faith re requires us to get our feet wet, believing uh, that when you do, God will reveal the next step or steps in front of you. He didn't reveal, for example, the ram caught in the thicket for Abraham until what? Abraham had gone from his home with his son, with the fire, went all the way, and the wood, by the way. They carried the wood all the way from the house, right? Carried the wood and, and, and uh, the fire and left the house with the, the servants and the, and, the, and the beasts. Got all the way to where God said, yep, that's the place. They climbed the mountain with the wood and the fire. He made the altar. He bound his son. And he took up the knife before he heard the ram bleeding behind him. Where did that ram come from? Right? I'm a deer hunter. I know animals are sneaky, but it was caught in a thicket. How did he not know? God provides by faith. And because that was a test of faith for Abraham, and the angel stopped him and said, yes, now I know. See, we need to get our feet wet. Why aren't many people growing in their faith in God? Well, they're not willing to get their feet wet. They want God to show them the way before they ever get off their seat. And that's not the way God ever works. Right? Well, I, I shouldn't say not ever works because, well, anyway, I'll get to that after a while. Stepping out in faith requires obedience. Well, look who's here. Boy, we didn't have to send the posse out. We didn't have to go rescue them. They didn't get a broken leg coming down the mountain on the skis. It's good to see you all back. Good to see you back. Stepping out, we're in Joshua chapter 3, by the way, L walking through there. You're not always going to understand completely the instructions. You're not always going to understand what God's asking you to do. You're not always going to see the whole picture. If you did, you wouldn't need faith. If you did, it wouldn't be faith. But faith requires, for faith to grow, it requires you to obey God especially when you don't understand, right? Did Abraham know there was going to be a ram caught in a thicket? Absolutely not. His mind, and we read in Hebrews in the Hall of Faith, that in his mind, in his heart, he thought God will raise Isaac back from the dead. If he asked me to offer him on the altar, he promised me this son, he's going to raise him from the dead. Well, that wasn't God's plan. But that enabled him to obey God by faith until God did reveal the plan. In Joshua chapter 3, Joshua says, people, you need to prepare because we're going to see God do something tomorrow. They had to wash their clothes. They had to do, do all the steps that we talked about last week in preparing. And then he says, all right, priest, you're going to have to go stand in the water. And hey, everybody, they're going to go stand in the water, and then God's going to show up. 
See, it required steps of faith and steps of obedience on everybody's part. Okay? Um, and that's the way God works. Faith gives way to sight, and then our faith is increased. Right? When, when our obedience causes us, and our faith causes us to be obedient, and then that faith and obedience combined allows us to move forward, and then we get our eyes open to what God's going to do. Right? Um, look at Deuteronomy chapter uh, 13. Deuteronomy chapter 13, just one book back. <clears throat> Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse number 4. Deuteronomy 13, 4. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God, and fear him, and keep his commandments, and obey his voice. Ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. Right? Hold on to him. Attach yourself to him. That's, what, that's how we're going to increase our faith. Right? That's how we're, oftentimes, I'm a dad. Got, got boys, boys that are very inquisitive. And because I have so many kids, I imagine all the questions. Right? What are we doing? When are we going to do it? When are we leaving? When are they going to get here? How's this going to work? One of the answers that I've started giving is watch and learn. Follow me, boys, and let's get into this. Well, Dad, this and Dad, that and Dad, this. Wait, time out. I've been around a little while. You're going to learn something. Let's go. Right? And that's the way God is. Come along. Get your feet wet. Obey, and you'll get to see what I'm going to do. So what areas of faith do you need to step out in so that you can grow? I mean, I just want you to take a moment to think about this. What areas is your faith insufficient in? What areas do you look at and say, ah, that's dark and obscure, and I'm just not sure God's going to do it? I'm not sure God can do it. I'm not sure God will do it. I, I just don't know. You know, for some people... You say, well, would you teach Sunday school? Well, I can't, I can't do that. Well, the truth of the matter is, Moses, you could do it. Early in my Christian life, I'll tell you a few things I struggled with. One of the things I struggled with was faithful attendance. Well, I'm busy. I got stuff going on. I got to work tomorrow, right? I, we, I, I can't spend all the time at church. And I had to grow in my faith to learn that time invested in knowing God and learning about God and being with God and God's people was not a waste of time. But that was a, a step of faith that I had to take, right? Right? And by the way, you can't grow in your relationship with God in faith until you do commit to Him, right? And so one of the things that helped me when my preacher came and said, hey, Jim, you're the only person, the only person in this whole congregation knows anything about songs and singing. Would you lead the music? Uh, well... He goes, now the only thing is, you're going to have to be here for all the services. Hmm. Yeah, I guess I can do that. That was a step of faith, but it was one of the very important steps of faith in my life. Right? And I praise the Lord that I had a pastor that cared enough to challenge me on that area. Another area that uh, was challenging to me, maybe, maybe it is for you all as well, but the area of giving and tithing, that was a challenge for me early on. I was an E5 in the military with a family. 
And I said, I, I can't hardly afford now. How, how does giving 10% to God solve my financial problem? Has anybody else ever struggled with that, or am I the only person? Okay, I was just curious. I was just curious. And see, this is an area that uh, the preacher always called it God's math. And I, can't, I still can't explain God's math. I mean, all the math I know is 1 plus 1 is 2, and 2 minus 1 is 1. And I, I get all that. But I can tell you that from then until now, I don't give 10% anymore. My giving goes somewhere between 20 and 30%. You say, well, you've got 12 kids. How can you do that? Exactly. And you ever been to my house? I mean, yeah, you see my van, right? You know why my van looks like that? Because it's old. And I don't have any intention, Lord willing, of buying another van that size because Brad's going to trade me for his truck. <laughs> All right, well, maybe that's my wishes that Brad... But I'm not planning on buying another big van like that, right? My family is shrinking at this point, not growing, unlike Brad's family, right? So... <laughs> I don't need a big van for much longer. And uh, in fact, we're starting to take seats out, right? So um, anyway, the point is, God has provided. And I, unless I took steps of faith. Now listen, I'm not telling you there was no test. I remember specifically a number of tests. I've testified of a couple of those tests a couple of times. I remember the week that I got my, you, in, in the military, you get paid on the 1st and the 15th, the 1st and the 15th, the 1st and the 15th, right? Now, between the 1st and the 15th, it's always the same. There's always 15 days between that pay period. But in some cases, from the 15th to the next 1st, it's not 15 days. And you go, how are we going to make it? Right? And I remember on a particular occasion, I came home and we paid all our bills. And I told my wife, we, we, have, we don't have a dollar left if I pay my tithe. We won't have anything left if I write this check. There will be nothing left in the bank account. And it, pay, today's payday. And she said, well, we should trust the Lord. We should, we should pay our tithes. But just so you know, we don't have any milk and we don't have any bread and we're out of eggs and, you know. I said, okay. Well, we'll pay our tithes. It wasn't an hour later that the doorbell rang and one of the other church members and their family were in their van with bags of groceries handing me with milk and bread and eggs and everything that she said was on the list. You see, until you get your feet wet, your faith cannot grow. I wish I could explain the hair standing up on my neck right now. You see, the test is part of the growth. That's the feet wet part. You have to make a commitment to doing what God says before he's ever going to show you that he'll do what he said. That's faith. And that's the obedience that leads to an increase. That's the step of obedience that leads to that increase. All right? And so, I hope you understand that I, I don't know what areas you're struggling with. I don't know what areas you need to grow in your faith. Maybe it's in the area of service and God wants you to get involved in some way. Maybe it's in the area of, of priorities and he wants you to cut back on something that's not helping your relationship with him and causing you to not grow. I don't know. I'm just saying this. Stepping into the water and making a commitment that I'm going to follow God even if it means my stockings get wet. Then is when you can start growing. You're not going to grow until 
your feet get wet. All right? Um, stepping out requires trust. That's what it requires. Is God worthy of our trust? And I can tell you he is. I can answer the question for you. But my answer is not going to resolve the conflict that's in here for you. You have to get to the place where you say, I know he's trustworthy. I'm going to believe he's trustworthy. And because of that, I'm going to obey to prove he's trustworthy. And then you will find out, and then you will grow. Turn to Psalms. Look at a few different Psalms here. And by the way, uh, the Psalms, there's a number of Psalms that can help you with this, right? Just memorizing them or, or writing them on a three by five card and putting them on your vanity mirror or on your refrigerator or what have you uh, can help you remind yourself that he is trustworthy, that he is faithful, that your, your confidence in him will not go unnoticed and unrewarded, right? But again, we have to get our feet wet. Our key verse is Joshua 3, or the passage is Joshua 3, and right now we're in Psalm chapter 5. I want you to notice verse 11, Psalm 5, 11. And again, as I've said before, we could read all of Psalm 5. Uh, it's all good. We could read all of Psalm 9, which we're going to next. We could read all of Psalm 18. We could read all of Psalms, but we don't have time. So I'm going to point out key verses in these passages. And my encouragement to you, right, this is Sunday school class. Most teachers that I've ever met send homework home. My homework is go home and study and see if it isn't so for yourself. Practice and take steps of faith and obedience to grow your faith in your relationship with God. All right, Psalm 5, verse 11. But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. For thou, o, uh, thou Lord, will bless the righteous, will favor, uh, with favor wilt thou compass him with a shield. God is there for us as we step out, put our trust in him, put our faith and confidence in him, demonstrate that through obedience. God provides for us. Psalm chapter 9, notice with me verse number 10. Psalm 9 and verse 10. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. When, when Joshua and the priests put their feet in the water of Jordan, what happened? The water parted. It was in a flood time. The waters were, you know, some of you have seen the Mississippi River in flood time. It's coming out the banks. If you go up St. Mary's Way, it stretches all the way from St. Mary all the way across the river and, you know, way over into there. And it says it stood on a heap and let them cross on dry ground. And they picked 12 stones, one of every tribe, and they put it in the middle of the Jordan River as they crossed or did they pick them up out of the middle and carry them across and set them up and think that's what they did get that story confused that wasn't part of my notes it's free study it and see if it isn't so psalm 18 psalm 18 <clears throat> in psalm 18 i want you to notice the first three verses there it says, to the chief musician, a psalm of David, the servant of the Lord, who spake unto the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. And he said, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler, the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. Verse 3, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from mine enemies. 
Remember where David was at. We talked about this a couple of times over the last week. There were many times that David, he was in the cave at Adullam once. He was out on the plains one time. Saul, his enemy, is laying right in front of him. If the roles had been reversed, David would have been dead in a heartbeat. But David said, I am not going to put my hands on the Lord's anointed. God wants to kill him. That's his business, but I'm not doing it. And he walked away. And now he's looking back on all of those times, and he obeyed and trusted the Lord and said, I'm not going to do that. That would be wrong. And now God is taking care of his enemy, and he's becoming the king of Israel. And he says, I'm just here to say, you can trust God. You can trust God. So, uh, praise the Lord, we have a God we can trust in. Psalm chapter 20. Come on in. Good to meet you. Uh, have you this morning, sir. Psalm chapter 20, verses 6 and 7. We're talking about faith and how we can grow in our faith. It requires us to get our feet wet. Joshua chapter 3. You're going to have to go stand in Jordan. And then you'll see the hand of the Lord. Hey, people, you're going to have to prepare yourself. You're going to have to cleanse yourself. You're going to have to uh, you know, not come against your wives. You're going to have to do all these steps. And then you're going to see God do something. Faith requires obedience. Obedience then increases our faith. What areas do we need to grow faith, grow our faith? Psalm chapter 20. He says, uh, verses 6 and 7, Psalm 20, verses 6 and 7. Again, you could read all of Psalm 20. It'd be great. Go home and study it. But in verse 6, it says, Now know I that the Lord saveth his anointed. Again, a Psalm of David. Looking back, having trusted God, having obeyed God, having followed God, he says, Now know I that the Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear him uh, from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. He said, verse 7, Some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. I'll say this again, the Lord is trustworthy. If we want to increase in our relationship with him, if we want a closer relationship with him, if we want a, a, a stronger faith, a more meaningful faith, then the only way to get it is to get our feet wet by trusting and obeying him. Moving forward in a step of faith, in a direction that he's prompting us to, and then seeing him work. Obeying when it doesn't make any sense to obey. As I said, for me, one of the areas was tithing. I said, well, I, I can't afford to do that, right? It seemed a very logical, a very truthful statement on my part. But the honest truth was I couldn't afford not to. That's what my preacher said. You can't afford not to, Jim. He said, well, I don't understand it. He goes, well, you just try God and see if it isn't so. And I can tell you right now, he opened the windows of heaven. He opened the windows of heaven, as he always does, Right? And uh, he provided. Uh, trusting him and faithful attendance for me, that was a big, big step of faith for me. A uh, lot of obstacles in my way. Most of them, selfishness and self-centeredness. And, and it was all about me, what I wanted to do. That's going to hinder my plans for the days and the times. But when I just trusted God and followed through with what I was prompted to do, uh, God worked a work in my life that... Uh, I can tell you, I, I, I would not be the same person today had I not trusted the Lord and followed in those steps, right? Uh, and those are just two of the most obvious ones to me as I look back in my life that made such a difference. I, I could talk about his prompting me and his talking to me and his asking me and calling me to pastor, come here and start this church. I could talk about that for a little while, but you all have heard that story before. That was a step of faith. It wouldn't have happened without the other, because every step of faith is, is hanging on the prior ones, right? There are stepping stones, 